Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Real History. I am your host, history professor Jared Frederick, and I was very pleased to discover just recently that Apple TV Plus had dropped a trailer for its next historical epic. And man, they are just rolling them out, and I'm loving it. They're giving us plenty of great content to consider here on our channel. Not only do we have Masters of the Air and Greyhound and Napoleon and Killers of the Flower Moon, but also a forthcoming biographical series about Coco Chanel and Benjamin Franklin, and it appears to just keep on going and going. Uh, the one that really piqued my interest, though, is the miniseries Manhunt, which is based on James Swanson's historical thriller of the same name. And of course, that is about the 12-day hunt for Lincoln's assassin and all of the upheaval that followed as the nation was plunged into chaos. And I see that actor Anthony Boyle, who plays Harry Crosby in Masters of the Air, is playing none other than John Wilkes Booth in this series. And I had a chance to, to see Anthony Boyle at the premiere of Masters of the Air in New York City, and he has a bright future ahead of him. He's a damn fine actor, and I will be interested in seeing his range as we contrast these two performances, because on one hand, Harry Crosby was this down-to-earth, humble, self-deprecating navigator, and John Wilkes Booth is anything but any of those, including a poor navigator, uh, racist, antagonistic, egotistical villain. <laughs> uh, so I'm really interested to see how he plays one of the most famous thespians of the 1860s. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Manhunt. I was born with a chance to be somebody. There's the famous Derringer. I'm going to be the most famous man in the whole world. Mr. President, the Confederacy is dead. The Union is saved. The war is Still over. Without a beard. What happened? The president's been shot. Witnesses are saying we're John Wilkes Booth. Wait, the actor? Do you know who I am? I'm a symbol. How does a well-known actor commit murder mm. in front of an audience of 1,500 people and escape? Looks well, nothing like the man that killed my husband. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am tasking you with the capture of John Wilkes Booth. This can be broken. This is a conspiracy to dismember our government. I know who you are, Mr. Booth. You gonna help us or not? There's a bounty on the head of Booth. I intend to collect. Booth is being protected by the Confederacy. Now with Lincoln out of the way, this country belongs to us. I will not surrender. May God be my judge. God bless America. <laughs> Good snicker there at the end. The most famous man in the whole world. Not only did Booth supposedly say that he was going to be the most famous man in the world, but he also had these delusions of grandeur that he was going to be treated as a hero, an American Brutus who struck down a tyrant at his ultimate moment of power. Uh, so certainly that is an accurate reflection on the part of John Wilkes Booth's character. Mr. President, the Confederacy is dead. The Union is saved. So the actor Amish Linkwater is not looking too bad here as Abraham Lincoln, perhaps not quite as convincing as Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, but Tobias Menzies playing Edwin Stanton without a beard. I mean, let's look at a photograph of Edwin Stanton. This is one of the most famous <laughs> pieces of facial hair of the American uh, Civil War era. Um, I'm just really surprised that they wouldn't have his signature piece of, of recognition. 
But I think I think if they had put a beard on Tobias Menzies, even if it was a shorter one, as well as spectacles, which Edwin Stan also wore, I think it would have been a really good match. Uh, I I think in comparison, uh, Kevin Klein did a really great job of playing Edwin Stanton in Robert Redford's film, The Conspirator. Um, but the blue ribbon definitely goes to Bruce McGill, who plays the Secretary of War in Spielberg's Lincoln. That one is just uncanny, and they, they did such a good job. Uh, all that said, though, uh, Tobias Menzies is a really great actor, and I'll be interested to see if he can bring that sort of gravitas to the character. Uh, the gravitas that Stan was so well known for. The Lincoln assassination has been filmed so many times, uh, going all the way back to D.W. Griffith and the birth of a nation as far back as 1915, if not earlier. I mean, it's it's been done so many times, and I'll be really interested to see, will they be able to film this from a new angle or a way that an audience will be able to get a new interpretation or view of? I think it's a really tall order considering how frequently it's been done. What happened? The president's been shot. As we see all the historical buildings here in the background, I read up on this series a little bit and discovered that they filmed this in Savannah, Georgia, which is, of course, an absolutely fantastic place to film a, a movie set during this time period. And in fact, uh, Robert Redford's film, The Conspirator, which largely focuses on Mary Surratt and her role in the assassination, uh, was also filmed in Savannah, Georgia. How does a well-known actor commit murder in front of an audience of 1,500 people and escape? I believe this is a historical theater in Philadelphia, and it, it just really doesn't look like Ford's Theater at all. It's much bigger than Ford's Theater. The balcony is structured in a completely different way. I may be nitpicking, but let's face it, Ford's Theater is perhaps the most famous theater in America, and it's, it's not hard to find theaters of comparable size and design. What we undoubtedly see here is the removal of Lincoln's remains from the Peterson boarding house, which was right across the street from Ford's Theater, where the act was undertaken. And it, it does bear some similarity. There's circular stone steps going down into the street. It was, in fact, raining as his remains were removed and being taken to the White House. A large crowd of thousands had convened outside to await word of the president's condition and then to pay their respects. Uh, but we see him being removed in a, just a typical crate or a box. Uh, I don't think Americans would have countenanced the indignity of something like that uh, for their fallen leader. And the historical record states that he was removed in a wooden coffin. I don't think that it was put into a crate thereafter. Why would they have done that? The White House was just a few blocks away. This is a conspiracy to dismember our government. I know who you are, Mr. Booth. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, this, this just simply didn't happen. Uh, I believe this is supposed to be a gentleman by the name of Oswell Swan. And Swan uh, guided Booth through the Zakaya Swamp as he was on the run. And as Swan later testified in court. He was actually arrested. Some people thought that he himself was a conspirator. He knew that Lincoln had been assassinated, but he didn't really know who had done it. And he did not discover that it was Booth and that Booth was with him, nor did he draw a revolver, let alone two, uh, on him in a showdown moment like this. And so this just has kind of a a Western cliche to it, almost. Uh, not a great scene. Booth is being protected by the Confederacy. Now with Lincoln out of the way, this country belongs to us. It's not inaccurate to say that a lot of Americans did in fact think that the Lincoln assassination was part of this broader conspiracy fueled by these shadowy figures working within the realms of espionage for the Confederate government. I will be definitely interested to see 
how that sort of detective work and conspiracy theories come to light as shown in the show. And here we see a scene that's actually set in Richmond, Virginia. We can see the Virginia State House, which also stood in for the Confederate capital during the war in ruins. And uh, just days after the city capitulated, uh, Lincoln went and visited uh, the city quite famously. God bless America. That little click of the tongue there at the end on Booth's part, I think, is uh, a very good characterization of him. Uh, speaking of the, the ego and the daring and uh, self-confidence that this guy had. So there we have it, a little bit of perspective on Apple TV Plus's forthcoming miniseries Manhunt. I do have some reservations about what I've just seen. There were a few red flags but is that going to deter me from watching it and enjoying it? Probably not. Why is this so? Because I am a huge aficionado of Civil War movies and Civil War films. And in fact, I, I wish we had more of them. And if this series resonates, if it finds an audience, if it leads to more Civil War productions, then perhaps it will be worthwhile. Uh, but uh, I will withhold my full judgments until I watch the whole thing. This series will begin the same weekend that Masters of the Air concludes, and so if you're in a little bit of history withdrawal after spending all of these weeks with the 100th Bomb Group, I would definitely encourage you to check out Manhunt. And in the meantime, I also encourage you to read the book on which it is based, as is advertised in the trailer, the New York Times best-selling book entitled Manhunt by James L. Swanson. This is a very fast-paced book, easy to read, and it was actually slated to become a movie in the late 2000s. And for a while, Harrison Ford was actually attached to co-star in it as Colonel Everton Conger, uh, one of the military officers who was hunting John Wilkes Booth down. So I was reading about this film project for years and years and years, waiting to see if it would ever come to fruition, and here we are. That wraps up this episode, this short episode of Real History. As always, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your comments, your suggestions, and all of the ever colorful commentary that we see in the comments. We really do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button below. We'll see you next time on Real History, and until that time, stay curious.